Saturday is not the true Sabbath day. The biblical definition of time. In the early biblical period, time was marked by sunrise and sunset, phases of the moon, and location of a few constellations. But there were no names for days and months and no accurate knowledge of years. The year was lunar, 354 days, eight hours, 38 seconds, divided into 12 lunar months, with seven intercalary months added over 19 years. The Hebrew month began with the new moon. Early Hebrews gave the month's names. Later, they used numbers. And after the exile, they used Babylonian names. The sacred year began with Nisan from March through April. The secular year with Tishri, September through October. Months were divided by the Jews into weeks of seven days, ending with the Sabbath. Days were divided into 24 hours of 60 minutes of 60 seconds. The Roman day began at midnight and had 12 hours. The Hebrew day was reckoned from sunset. Now I want to make a few points about what we just went over. It states, months were divided by the Jews into weeks of seven days. Now that's key. You need to ask yourself, what makes a month? Weeks make a month. What makes weeks? Days makes weeks. Now all of this is within a month. So it states again, months were divided by the Jews into weeks of seven days, ending with the Sabbath. Days were divided into 24 hours. The Roman day began at midnight. So we go by a Roman Gregorian calendar, but we are supposed to go by the Creator's calendar because it states here that the Roman day began at midnight. Now we know we've been taught that a day begins at midnight, meaning the middle of the night, which don't make sense. Then it states, the Hebrew day was reckoned from sunset. That's wrong as well. But we're gonna correct all of these throughout this lesson. So as we go over this lesson, please put your questions and comments in the comment board. If you disagree or if you need more edification with that, let's get it. The Babylonian calendar is based on a lunar month. That is each month begins on the new moon. And if you observe the moon, and I think you should, you will observe that the moon goes through phases at the beginning of the cycle. It's a very thin crescent well, from your point of view. It's this way thin crescent right after sunset and then every subsequent evening it gets bigger and bigger and then it appears as a half disc which is the end of the first quarter and then on the 14th night of the cycle it's a full moon and you will notice that this is always the full moon on the night of the first Seder of Pesach which is dated on the night of the full moon and it is on the night of the first day of Sukkot, which is also on the 15th day of the month, which is the night of the 14th. So you follow that moon, you can tell what day it is on the Jewish calendar if you're interested. And then the moon reduces and goes into a different phase as it reduces to the third quarter. And then it disappears at what we call the new moon. And it doesn't appear in the sky anymore because it's on the same side as the sun. Now, that cycle is 29 and a half days. The moon cycle is 29 and a half days, but that's not practical. So what you do is you alternate. 
29 day month, 30 day month, 29 day month, 30 day month, and you go around 12 months like that. So you have 29 days alternating with 30 day months, and you wind up with 354 days. Uh, it's 11 days too short. It's too short for the solar cycle. Now, why is that important? Because the solar cycle is going to tell you when it's going to, when the rains will come, and it will also tell you when you should plant and when you should harvest. So you really need a solar cycle. But you're already fixed on the lunar month, and therefore your year is going to be 11 days short. Now he stated that the solar year has 365 days, and the lunar year has 354 days, which will make the moon fall behind the sun 11 days too short. But that's not true. So when you look at this calendar right here, we see that the solar year, meaning the sun year, has 364 days, and the lunar year has 354 days. Therefore, the moon falls behind the sun 10 days every year. So since the moon falls behind the sun a total of 10 days per year, we have to add a 13th month every three years in order for the moon to get back in conjunction with the sun. This is why it states when you read in the biblical definition of time, the year was lunar divided into 12 lunar months with seven intercalary months added over 19 years. For more edification, check out my lesson, the lunar solar calendar calculations. Romans chapter 15, verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There's many people that kick against the lunar Sabbath, but you have to be patient if you want to be edified and you have to thoroughly go through these scriptures and other biblical reference books if you want to be edified. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 1 through 8. How has Yahweh covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel? And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. Yahweh has swallowed up all the inhabitations of Jacob and hath not pity. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devours round about. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. Yahweh was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds and has increased in the daughter of Judah, mourning and lamentation. And he has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He has destroyed his places of the assembly. Yahweh has caused the solemn feast and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. And has despised in the indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. Yahweh has cast off his altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. He has given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of Yahweh, as in the day of a solemn feast. Yahweh has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he made the rampart and the wall to limit 
they languished together. So if he calls our feast days and Sabbaths to cease, how do you know if you're keeping the correct Sabbath or feast days? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Hosea chapter 2, verse 6 through 12. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path and she shall follow after her lovers. Who is the she? We're dealing with Israel. It states we are going to follow after our lovers. Who's our lovers? Other deities. But she shall not overtake them and she shall seek them but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. Now you need to understand who your first husband is. But we're going to break that down too. For then was it better with me than now? For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiply her silver and gold, which they prepare for Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause all her mirth to cease her feast day, her, feast day, her, feast day, her new moon, her new moon, her new moon, and her Sabbath, and her Sabbath, her Sabbath, her Sabbath, and all her and solemn feasts, solemn feasts, solemn feasts, solemn feasts, and I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she has said, "These are my rewards that my lovers have given me." And I will make them a forest and the beast of the field shall eat them. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 23 through 40. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of Yahweh, your Allah, which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which Yahweh, your Allah, has forbidden you for Yahweh, your Allah, is a consuming fire, even a jealous Allah. When you shall beget children and children's children, and you shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of Yahweh, your Allah, to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land where until you go over Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And Yahweh shall scatter you among the nations. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether Yahweh shall lead you. But what's going to happen once we get scattered to these other nations? Verse 28, and there you shall serve God, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. So we picked up their traditions, their culture, their language, their ways, their deities, their calendars, their days, their months, their Sabbaths. Verse 29, but if from thence, you shall seek Yahweh, your Allah. You shall find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul when you are in tribulation and all these things are come upon you even in the latter days. If you turn to Yahweh, your Allah, and shall be obedient unto his voice. For Yahweh, your Allah, is a merciful Allah. He will not forsake you, neither destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he has sware unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that Allah created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other, 
whether there has been any such thing as this great thing is or has been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of Allah speaking out of the midst of the fire as you has heard and live or has Allah essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that Yahweh, your Allah did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Unto you it was showed that you might know that Yahweh, he is Allah there is none else beside him out of heaven. He made you to hear his voice that he might instruct you. And upon earth, he showed you his great fire. And you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. And because you love your fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought you out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt to drive out nations from before you greater and mightier than you are to bring you in to give you their land for an inheritance as it is this day this day this day this day this day know therefore this day and consider it in your heart that Yahweh he is Allah in heaven above and upon the earth beneath there is none else. You shall keep therefore his statutes and his judgments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days upon the earth, which Yahweh, your Allah gives you forever, 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 forever. Uh, this is about a new doctrine that has come out. Um, I want to see day one. Five, four. I want to see the numbers right there. Move, yeah, yeah. Right, you can leave it right there. Everybody can see that, right? I want everybody online. Put the link online. I want everybody to see and follow along with us. We went over this in Miami, I think it was. I forgot. Someplace we went over it. And I want somebody, uh, somebody, to, where's Obadiah? Oh, Obadiah. No, no, not you. Oh, uh, uh, Tobias, you know how to count, right? Stand up. All right, you see the calendar right there, right? Okay. Uh, actually, go to that side where the women are, because you're going to block the camera. Go to that side. All right, everybody see that calendar, right? So now, I'm going to tell you what to do in a moment. The doctrine is that the Sabbath is based upon the new moon. And when I say new moon, I'm referring to the old understanding of a black moon. So that every when the, when the black moon comes in, every seven days is a Sabbath. That's what's being trying to get pushed out there in the world. So we sat back and we thought about it. We examined it in the scriptures. They got it from, let's go, Captain Isaac, give me 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 24. Now I'm going to show you where the doctrine's coming from. We got to expose them. We got to. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 24. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. So uh, one more one moron said that David could only hide at night when the moon was black. He said, see, that's the proof. The moon is black. You can only hide at night. So what about all these criminals we can't find during the day? Where are they? <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 25. And the king sat upon his seat. As at other times, even upon a seat by the wall, and Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought, something hath befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? So notice it says, the second day of the month. So they said, see, the days are based upon the new moon. I said, okay, well, let's examine that according to the scripture to see if that's accurate. So, 
Are the days of the month the same as the days of the week? That is the question. Is every seventh day from the new moon a Sabbath? So now, uh, Tobias, start it. you see day one where it's all black, right? So that's, they said that's the new moon. So now let's count one, two, three, like the bouncing ball, four, five, six, seven. So according to the doctrine, that would be what, brothers? The Sabbath. So now let's count another seven, starting from eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the 14th. That would be what, according to them? The Sabbath. Okay. So, according to the scriptures, I want you to write that down because I don't want you to forget this. Write that down. Give me Leviticus 23, verse 5 and 6. So now remember, the seventh, according to them, is the Sabbath, and the 14th, according to them, would be a Sabbath. So we're going to examine Passover. Read that. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. So now, was that it? Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Okay, so the 14th day at evening is what, brothers? The Passover. Now, the 14th technically at evening would be what day numerically? The 15th. You with me, Jamaica? You. You with the glasses staring. Yeah, you. you. I don't want to lose anybody. Okay. Oh, that's Levi. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, according to God, the 14th day at evening would be what day? Which is what holiday? We all there. Who's confused so far? Maybe a new brother might not get it. I don't want y'all to lie now. It's okay if you don't understand how the holidays are charted. So now, okay, raise your hand high. So when you knew, you knew. Yeah, keep your hand up. Sorry, we got to see. When you, two, okay, good, good, good. Read it again, Captain Isaac. Read it again. Leviticus 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So now watch this. Watch this. Give me uh, Luke 22 and 1. I'm just going to prove Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread is the same day. That's all. Is it Luke 22 and 1 or Luke 24 and 1? 22 and 1. Luke chapter 22 verse 1. Come on. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Passover. Every, you knew brothers that raised your hand. Do you understand that? You understand that? The Feast of Unleavened Bread and Passover is the same thing. Go back to Leviticus 23 now. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Allah, that he may exalt you in due time. The reason why many people aren't getting the lunar Sabbath is because of pride. And I'm speaking about these camps, some of these teachers out here. That's popular. They can't get this because of pride, but they need to humble themselves under the mighty hand of Allah that he may exalt you in due time. The biblical definition of calendar. During the Bible period, time was reckoned solely on astronomical observations. Days, months, and years were determined by the sun and moon. I'm going to repeat that. Days, months, and years were determined by the sun and moon, not by crops. Crops can assist on determining a month or year, but time was reckoned solely on astronomical observations. Days, months, and years were determined by the sun and moon. Days of the week were not named by the Jews but were designated by ordinal numbers. So now you need to ask yourself, where did the days of the week come from? The Jews day began in the evening with the appearance of the first stars. Now this is wrong. I already disproved this, but I will disprove it again. The seven day week is of Semitic origin. Egyptians had a week of 10 days. The Jews week, had its origin in the creation account and ran consecutively irrespective 
of lunar or solar cycles. This was done for man's physical and spiritual warfare. The biblical records are silent regarding the observation of the Sabbath day from creation to the time of Moses. So if that's the case, where did the Saturday Sabbath come from? Ask yourself that. Sabbath observance was either revived or given special emphasis by Moses. The Hebrew month began with the new moon before the exile months were designated by numbers. So the Hebrew month began with a new moon. Now we have to get an understanding of what is a new moon and what does it look like? We already established that within a month, there are weeks. Within weeks, there are days. And the seventh day count is within a month. Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, Saturday Sabbaths are a tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Keep in mind, Christ is the word. The word are the scriptures. So not after Christ. Some may think that I'm adding to the word and taking away. We're going to see who's really adding to the word. We're going to see who's really taking away from the word. Because I'm going to go scripture by scripture and show and prove that a Saturday is not the true Sabbath day. And even in the evening does not make a day. And the beginning of a day does not begin at evening. I'm going to disprove these claims once again and build up unto a true Sabbath day. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahweh, Allahim of your fathers gives you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh, your Allah, which I commanded you. And one of the major commandments that was given to the children of Israel, as well as all mankind, is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Dead Sea Scrolls, a new translation, translated and with commentary by Michael Wise, Martin Ebag Jr., and Edward Cook. This is the chapter for a reader's guide to the Quran calendar text, page 297, the bottom paragraph. The authors and readers of the scrolls differ from most Jews of their day in the importance they ascribe to the sun. The sun's annual journey through the heavens was the basis for their calendar. Most Jews, in contrast, embraced a lunar calendar that was the primitive ancestor in the modern Hebrew calendar. The difference in outlook was not absolute, but rather a matter of degree. The writers of the scrolls were interested in the moon. The other side, perforce, kept an eye on the sun. The lunar calendar of most Jews employed a system of intercalation, intermittent adding of months based on the solar cycle. The dispute, and it was a bitter dispute to judge from the polemics we read in the scrolls, 
was really about which heavenly body was more important. Logically, the more important body should rule, should govern sacred time. Would the sun and its cycle govern the festivals of Israel's sacred year, or would the moon have pride of place? The altars of the scrolls cast their vote for the sun. Now, if we fast forward to this very day, we are still disputing on whether we should use the sun or the moon. And some use both, because if you keep the Saturday Sabbath, which is off of a man's solar calendar, and then you use the lunar calendar for feast days, you're using both. But like I stated before, I don't understand how can you use the lunar system or lunar calendar for feast days and not use the same calendar, which is the lunar calendar for Sabbath days. But most of the people today that use the solar calendar basis their information from the book of Jubilees. Chapter six, verse 30 through 38. And all the days of the commandments will be two and 50 weeks of days, and these will make the entire year complete. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets. And there is no neglecting this commandment for a single year or from year to year. And command you, the children of Israel, that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony. And they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. And all of the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years, and will forget the new moons, and seasons, and Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. For I know and from henceforth will I declare it unto you. And it is not of my own devising for the book lies written before me. And on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon, meaning 10 days before the sun year is complete. Verse 37, for this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony and an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. For this reason, I command and testify to you that you may testify to them. For after your death, your children will disturb them. So they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. So going off of a solar calendar, is that truly biblical? Or is the lunar calendar biblical? Now here we have the works of Josephus. Let's see who Josephus was. Flavius Josephus, AD 37, C 100, is the author of what has become for Christianity perhaps the most significant extra-biblical writings of the first century. His works are the principal source for the history of the Jews from the reign of Antiochus Epiphanes, B.C. 175 to 173, to the fall of Masada in A.D. 73, and therefore are of incomparable value for determining the setting of late intertestamental and New Testament times. Josephus, born the son of a priest, was named Joseph ben Matthias. 
being of a priestly family and a descendant of the Hasmoneans, he was well educated and rose to a respected position in the Hebrew community. After a short association with the Essenes and a somewhat long period as a disciple of an ascetic hermit named Bonus, he decided at the age of 19 to join the Pharisees. So as we see, Josephus was a descendant of a priest. Who were the priests? The priests are Levites. Now this is the Antiquities of the Jews. Chapter 10, book number three, chapter 10, concerning the festivals and how each day of such festival is to be observed. So we're gonna jump up to paragraph three in the States. On the 10th day of the same lunar month, they fasted till the evening. And this day they sacrificed a bull and two rams and seven lambs, a kid of goats for sins. Why would I bring this out? I'm showing you guys that they use a lunar system. So this is paragraph five, book number three, chapter 10, page 96. In the month of Anzeticus, which is by us called Nisan, and it is the beginning of our year on the 14th day of the lunar month when the sun is in Aries. So Josephus understood that we use the lunar system for our feast days. But what about our Sabbaths? This is the works of Philo. Philo, usually known as Philo the Jew. Philo Judius. Or Philo of Alexandria, a city in Egypt with a large Hebrew diaspora population in Greco-Roman times. So he was around during this time lived from about 20 BC to about AD 50. He is one of the most important Hebrew authors of the second temple period of Judaism and was a contemporary of both Yahawashah and Paul. Yet Philo is not nearly as well known or as frequently read as the first century AD Hebrew historian Josephus. But what was Philo? Was he a Hebrew? And if so, which tribe was he from? The author of the following treatises was, as the title by which he is generally known imports of Hebrew extraction and a descendant of the sacerdotal tribe of Levi, a priest. He is spoken of by Josephus as one of the most eminent of his contemporary countrymen and as the principal of the embassy which was sent to Caligula to solicit him to recall the command which he had issued for the erection of his statue in the temple at Jerusalem. So we're going to see if he used a lunar system too. These are our ancient ancestors from the tribe of Levi, which are the priests that did all the teachings, ceremonies, and made sure the law was instituted to the children of Israel. So for the ones that use a solar calendar, what do you use the moon for? Why are there phases to the moon? So why many put their foundation on the book of Jubilees with the solar calendar. And some might put their foundation on the lunar calendar. But we are going to see whose calendar is correct by the scriptures. So I present to you, Saturday is not the true Sabbath day. Part two. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto Allah Hayyam, a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So what you're about to witness is how to rightly divide the word of truth. On our Sabbath days, we are to have a holy convocation, which is a sacred assembly, meeting, or reading. So what should the moon look like on the Sabbath days? This is the works of Philo. The book of the special laws, one, page 550, paragraph 177 and 178. It states, 
And after he had ordered these things concerning the seventh day, he said that for the new moons, it is necessary to offer ten whole burnt offerings in all, two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs. For since the month is perfect in which the moon makes its way through its cycle, he thought that a perfect number of animals should be sacrificed. The number 10 is the completely perfect number which he must appropriately assign to the animals which have been mentioned. The two young bulls, since they are two motions of the moon, as it is continually run, is double course. The motion of waxing until full moon and the motion of waning until its conjunction with the sun. One ram, since there is one principle of reason by which the moon waxes and wanes in equal intervals, both as it increases and diminishes in illumination. The seven lambs, because it receives the perfect shapes in periods of seven days. Let me repeat that. It receives the perfect shapes in periods of seven days. The half moon in the first seven day period, after its conjunction with the sun, full moon in the second, and when it makes its return again, the first is to half moon, then it ceases as its conjunction with the sun. So it stated again, the half moon in the first seven day period, on your first Sabbath day after the new moon, it should be a half moon. Then it states, after its conjunction with the sun, full moon in the second, meaning full moon in the second Sabbath of the month. And when it makes its return again, the first is to half moon. Then the next Sabbath, which will be a third Sabbath day of the month, it will return into a half moon. Then it ceases as its conjunction with the sun. So remember, it stated the motion of waxing until full moon and the motion of raining until its conjunction with the sun. The ram, since there is one principle of reason by which the moon waxes and wanes in equal intervals, both as it increases and diminishes in illumination. The seven lambs, because it receives the perfect shapes in periods of seven, seven days. Seven, day, seven, day, seven, day, day, seven, First quarter waxing gibbous Phases of the moon Full moon winding gibbous Last quarter winding crescent Phases of the moon New moon waxing crescent First quarter waxing gibbous Phases of the moon Full moon winding gibbous Last quarter winding crescent When the moon is in the same direction of the sun It's called the new moon, new moon when you don't see no light coming from the moon It is a dark moon called the new moon A crescent moon is in the next stage When the moon is lit a quarter of the way Less than half but more than zero This is called the crescent moon Now a quarter moon's a half moon You see a half moon's a quarter moon Quarter moon's a half moon They call a half moon a quarter moon Because it made a quarter of its turn around the earth you see half of the moon lit up and I know what you're thinking but it's a half moon called the quarter moon half moon's a quarter moon quarter moon's a half moon phases of the moon new moon waxing crescent first quarter waxing gibbous phases of the moon full moon winding gibbous last quarter winding crescent phases of the moon new moon waxing crescent first quarter waxing gibbous phases of the Last quarter, winding crescent. Now the gibbous moon is a little more full, but not all the way full. The lit up part is between a full moon and a half moon, called the gibbous moon. Now the full moon shines so bright, you see the full moon light up the night. Halfway through a circle, circle, you see the full moon light up the night. Crescent, first quarter waxing gibbous Phases of the moon Full moon winding gibbous Last quarter winding crescent Phases of the moon New moon waxing crescent First quarter waxing gibbous Phases of the moon Full moon winding gibbous Last quarter winding crescent Phases of the moon
Bonding in here, this last quarter, one in Crescent. Now we're going back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. But these lights, when you look up in the firmament, they are for signs. That's Hebrews 2.26. Off. Signal, banner, warning, mark, or token. So when we see these lights in the firmament, they are used for a signal, or warning, or a mark, token, or banner. Now when you look up season, that's Hebrews 4150, Moadah, appointed place, time, meeting, or assembly. Now what's that main instrument used for that? Psalms 104 verse 19 He appointed the moon for seasons Now when you look up season That's Hebrews 4150 Moadah Appointed place Time Meeting Or assembly He appointed the moon To know the appointed place Time meeting or assembly is approaching Ecclesiasticus Chapter 43, verse 6 through 8. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Now verse 7 is key. From the moon is the sign of feast. From the moon is the sign of feast. A light that increases in her perfection. When we look at the moon, it is for a sign of feast or an assembly, appointed place, a meeting. Verse 8. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So we talked about the new moon day, six working days and the Sabbath day. Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1 Thus says Yahweh Elohim, the gate of the inner court that look towards the east shall be shut the six working days but on the Sabbath it shall be open and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. Well there's another day that we need to understand. John chapter 19 verse 42 There laid they Yahweh therefore because of the Jews preparation day for the sepulchre was near at hand So what is a preparation day And when is the preparation day Mark chapter 15 verse 42 And now when the even was come because it was the preparation that is the day the day for the, the sabbath 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 so if the preparation day is the day before a sabbath what number day is the preparation day if the seventh day is the sabbath day exodus chapter 16 verse 21 through 23 and they gathered every morning every man according to his eating and when the sun waxed hot it melted and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread two omers for one man and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses so the sixth day is a preparation day which is the day before every Sabbath and you are supposed to prepare for the Sabbath day 
on the sixth day. That's why it states, and they gather twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Verse 23, and he said unto them, this is that which Yahweh has said, tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto Yahweh. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will see, and that which remains overlaid up for you to be kept until the morning, which begins a Sabbath day. So let's break down the new moon, the working days, and the Sabbath days in the first month, according to scripture. I told you before that your Sabbath days will fall on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th of every month. So let's prove it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Now Philo gave an explanation of why the tenth day was chosen. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Verse 6. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, if you've been paying attention, I stated the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd, and the 29th day of every month is a Sabbath day. So if this is the 14th day of the first month, this is also a preparation day. I'm going to jump to verse 12 through 21. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, meaning the 14th day at night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day shall you put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eats unleavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No man of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feasts of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt, Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Now let's break down when we should start. And this is very detailed, so pay attention. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eats that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. So it's stated in verse 18, on the 14th day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and 20th day of the month at even. So how many evenings is that? Let's count. 14th day, that's 1, 15th day, that's 2, 16th day, that's 3, 17th day, that's 4, 18th day, that's 5, 19th day, that's 6, 20th day, that's 7, and the 21st day, that's 8. 
But verse 19 states, seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. So we just counted eight days, but not verse 19 says seven days. See, what we have to understand is we supposed to start unleavened bread on the 14th day at even. It, but it didn't say we supposed to have no leaven found in our houses on the 14th day at even. Keep in mind, it's a preparation day because the very next day, which begins in the morning on the 15th day, which begins your seven day count. Verse 19 again states, seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eats that which is leaven, even their soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. So the 15th day begins your seven day count. And no leaven is supposed to be in your houses. Verse 20. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your family and kill the Passover. Verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight, Yahweh smoked all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. So this happened in the middle of the night. So what day is this? This is still the 14th day. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of Yahweh went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto Yahweh for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahweh to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generation. So the 14th day at night is a night to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generation. Verse 51. And it came to pass the self same day that Yahweh did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So the children of Israel left the self same day out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Numbers chapter 9 verse 1 through 5. And Yahweh spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season in the 14th day of this month at even you shall keep it in its appointed season according to all the rites of it and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall you keep it and Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. So verse 2, it states, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. Which instrument of light was appointed for seasons again? Psalms, chapter 104, verse 19. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows his going down. So what will the moon look like during Passover and the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Now keep in mind the moon tells us that a feast day or Sabbath day is coming or is here. So what will the moon look like on those feast days? Leviticus chapter 23 verse 6 through 8. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahweh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And the first day, you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no survival work on it. So we're speaking on the 15th day, we're supposed to have a holy convocation. Why? Because it's a high Sabbath day. This is the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For you shall offer an offering made by fire unto your house seven days. 
in the seventh day is an holy convocation. You shall do no survival work therein. So the seventh day will be the 21st day. And it states that we're supposed to have a holy convocation on that day too. And treat it as a Sabbath day. So Numbers chapter 33 verse 3 through 5. And they departed from Remesis in the first month. On the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which Yahweh had smitten among them upon their gods. Also, Yahweh executed judgments. And the children of Israel removed from Remesis and pitched in Sukkot. So which day did they pitch? In Sukkot Let's look up pitch H 2583 To incline By implication of decline Specifically to pitch a tent Generally to encamp Dwell Camp Grow to an end Lie Pitch Rest in a tent So which day did they do this? They did this on the 15th day Because it's a Sabbath day Let's go to the book of Jasper Chapter 81, verse 3 through 5. And the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in the land of Egypt in hard labor was 210 years. You see that? We was in bondage in Egypt for 210 years. But that's another lesson. And at the end of 210 years, Yahweh brought forth the children of Israel from Egypt with a strong hand. And the children of Israel traveled from Egypt and from Goshen and from Ramesses and encamped in Sukkot on the 15th day of the first month. They encamped. What does encamp mean? And why did they encamp on the 15th day of the first month? Because when you go back to Exodus chapter 13 verse 20 It says and they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped When we look up encamp in the Hebrew concordance That's Hebrews 25:83, Chanak To lay siege against, bend down, incline Specifically to pitch a tent Dwell, grow to an end, rest in tent so why did they encamp or rest on the 15th day of the first month? Because it was a Sabbath day. John chapter 13 verse 1 through 4. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Yahweh knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Yahweh saw knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from Allah and went to Allah. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. So what day is this? This is the 13th day. This is where they get the last supper from because Yahweh did not partake in the Passover because he was ultimately the Passover. He was killed on Passover day. So this is the 13th day. How do we know this is the 13th day? So this is Matthew chapter 26, and verse 24 through 26. The son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. That's a strong statement. Verse 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, You have said. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahweh took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now remember on Passover night, we supposed to eat unleavened bread. So let's see what kind of bread this is. This is in the Greek accordance. That's G740. Artos. Now keep in mind, it's supposed to be unleavened bread. It states, bread as raised, a loaf, 
food composed of flour mixed with water and baked. The Israelites made it in the form of an oblong or round cake as thick as one's thumb. So basically this was regular bread and not unleavened bread. So this is John chapter 18 verse 2 and 3. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Yahweh shall oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, comes thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Verse 12 through 14. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Yahweh Shai and bound him. Keep in mind, this is the 13th day. And led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he, which gave counsel to the Jews, that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Verse 27 and 28. Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Yahawashah from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early and they themselves went not into judgment hall, lest they shall be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. So now we know this is the next day. This is the 14th day. It was early. This is Passover day. Verse 38 through 40. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But you have a custom that I shall release unto you one at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? So we know that this is Passover day. So now we know that he did not sit down and eat the Passover or have Passover dinner with his disciples because that was the day before. That was the 13th day what the Christians got right, the Last Supper. So verse 39 again, but you have a custom that I shall release unto you one at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews, which is Yahweh Shai? Let's see what they say. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. So they didn't want to release the righteous man. They wanted them to release the unrighteous man, Barabbas, who did sin, not the man who did no sin. Now remember, that's the 14th day. Now let's go to Mark. This is all in the first month, by the way. Mark chapter 15, verse 6 through 21. Now at that feast, he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. For the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will you then that I shall do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil has he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Yahweh when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and planted a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed and then spit upon him and bowed their knees, worshiped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Verse 32 through 42. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. 
and that they were crucified with him, reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Now, if this is the 14th day, what kind of moon should be outside at evening? It should be a full moon. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Yahweh cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted. My God, my God, why has you forsaken me? And some of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, Behold, he called Elijah. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Yahweh I cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the Satyrian, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost. He said, truly, this man was the son of God. So it stated that it got dark. Some might equate this to an eclipse, but it wasn't an eclipse because it was a full moon. Eclipse don't happen on full moon days. One of the ops out of Houston brought that to my attention as well. Eclipse does not happen on full moon days because keep in mind on full moon days, the sun and moon are on opposite ends. Verse 40, there were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, the less and of Jones and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath. So like I stated before, this is the first month of the year. The 14th day of the month is the preparation day. When you read verse 42, it states uh, once again, and now when the evening was come on the 14th day of evening, because it was the preparation. That is, what is it? The day before the Sabbath. So if the very next day, which is the 15th day, is the Sabbath day, which is also a high Sabbath day, off default, the eighth day will be a Sabbath day. The 22nd day will be a Sabbath day. And the 29th day will be a Sabbath day for the first month. Now I stated before that the moon was a full moon. Let's see what Philo says about this day. The works of Philo. Book, Questions and Answers on Genesis 1. Paragraph 91. It states, Since it is on the 15th day that the moon is rendered full of light, borrowing its light of the sun at the approach of evening, and restoring it to him again in the morning. During the night of the full moon, the darkness is scarcely visible, but it is all light. This is the book of Special Laws 2 in the works of Philo. Paragraph 155, page uh, 582. And this feast is begun on the 15th day of the month. In the middle of the month. Let's see what the moon looks like. On the day on which the moon is full of light. In consequences of the providence of Allah taking care that there shall be no darkness on that day. So on your feast days, the beginning of the Feast of Eleven Bread, in the first month, and the Feast of Tabernacles, in the seventh month, the 15th day of those months, he stated, Allah, I am taking care that there should be no darkness on that day. It's not a coincidence that the phases of the moon are equal distances apart. This is Philo again, the special laws, part four, paragraph 234. And again, are not the periods of the moon as she advances and retraces her course from a crescent 
to a full circle and again from a complete orb to a crescent all measured by an equality of distances which coincide with your Sabbath days for as great and as long as the period and amount of her increase is so also is her diminution in both respects as to magnitude and duration as to the number of days and the size of her orb. John chapter 19 verse 31. So this is still dealing with Yahweh when he was crucified on the cross. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was in high, was in high day. 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 besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Verse 38 through 42. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Yahweh, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Yahweh. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Yahweh. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Yahweh by night and brought a mixture of mirth and aloe, about a hundred pound weight. Now keep in mind, it's the 14th day. Then took they the body of Yahweh and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Yahweh therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. So he was laid to rest on the preparation day, which is the 14th day at evening the very next day is a sabbath day so by default the 8th the 22nd and the 29th are sabbath days the 8th day will be a half moon the 15th day will be a full moon the 22nd day will be a half moon and the 29th day will be a crescent moon so your new moon dictates your Sabbath days every month.